from the multimedia library of the Alliance Française de Nairobi, Soyez les bienvenus. Welcome to Mbodi Ya Maraisas. In this edition, I'm going to be talking to Mukoma Wa Ngodi, more elaborately to Dr. Mukoma Wa Ngodi Wa Yongo. He holds a PhD in English from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He is an associate professor of English at Cornell University in the USA. He has written fiction under the titles Mrs. Shaw, Black Star Nairobi, and Nairobi Heat. Poetry under the titles Logotherapy and Hurling Words at Consciousness. Drama under the title Drugs to Kill, Drug to Cure for Radio. Essays under the titles Conversing with Africa, Politics of Change, and The Rise of the African Novel, Politics of Language, Identity, and Ownership. But this particular conversation is to focus on his latest novel, which, among other things, he is here in Kenya to launch. Its title, Unbury Our Dead with Song. Welcome to Mbogi Yamaraitas, Mokoma Wangogi. Mokoma, if I may. No, thank you very much, Peso. Mokoma, I'm going to start by reading to you from your book. I hope I will put you to sleep. Mm. Tonight, for the first time, Ethiopian musicians were here. They were going to compete, singing the Tizita. The Tizita was not just a popular, traditional Ethiopian song. It was a song that was life itself. It had been sung for generations, through wars, marriages, deaths, divorces, and childbirths. For musicians and listeners exiled in Kenya, the US, and Europe, or trying to claim a home in Israel as Ethiopian Jews, the Tizita was like a national anthem to the soul or better and worse. As I got to learn more about the Tizita, I would understand why this competition mattered to the musicians. To be crowned the winner was like being named the singer of Ethiopia's soul. So, fairly on at the beginning, you have chosen to set your novel in Ethiopia, and yet you're a Kenyan currently living in America. Why Ethiopia? Yeah, so I, I, I do that too. Thank, thank you for the reading, actually. It's great to hear my words in your voice. I have to do with you than I can than I would. Um, yeah, I think my question from my desk here complicated because I, I was born in the US, then I grew up here, so I'm Kenyan American as well. Um, but why Ethiopia? I just happened to fall in love with the song. It, 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 it's a, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, the Tizita, but it's, it's a song that's sung by pretty much all serious musicians. And it's a song that was handed down from generation to generation from us married. So it has a very strict form. Um, yeah, but I happened to be at a party somewhere in, in Boston when I heard the song. And then I spent years looking for it because it was the days of, of, of CDs and tapes. Uh, so, so it took me a while to find the song. It took me about ten years to find, to find the song. And when I found the song, the, the initial emotions, of, you know, uh, came back to me on first hearing the song. So, so there's a line in the book where, where it says, "When you hear your tizita, you'll know it because you'll fall in love with it." So, so that, that's all that happened. I listened to this song and deeply fell in love with it. Became obsessed. And I, I spent three or four, three, four, five years listening to this song over and over again. Right, uh, obsessively. Yeah, so I would, I would say I just happened to fall in love with the Tizita. Um, but as a Kenyan, though, what I, what, what I couldn't do 
African American or whatever multiple identity that we all carry. Uh, what I couldn't do was explain that he's a Ethiopian, right? You know, so 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 the character, the, the main character, John Mark Twain, the um, you know the journalist, the investigative journalist who is looking for the song, he's very much well aware that he's an outsider. Right? So 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 you get to see, and there he has limitations. He doesn't speak Amharic. Let me leave that to lie. That's about it. I don't speak any Ethiopian languages. So so it's very very clear that he has, he also has his limitations. Um, you know, but the easy answer would be, you know, uh, you know, Ethiopia is a neighbor. <laughs> No, the reason, so, 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 so it's like visiting a neighbor, yeah. The reason why I put that question to you, yeah. Comma, is this whole idea of the wider debate about appropriation, which yeah. is very, very current, yeah. which basically, when one can summarize it, yeah. is that the only person who has the right yeah. to approach the subject must have some form of ownership. Yeah. And people take great umbrage if, for example, a white American writer has the audacity mm -hmm. to chronicle the black experience. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking, simply by being black, mm -hmm. the two of us, yeah. does it give you uh, the go ahead to deal with a Nigerian topic just because you're African? Yeah, and, and on, at a fundamental level as a scholar, right? For example, if you look at my scholarship there, the race of the African novel, I look at African American literature, you know, I look at um, Nigerian literature, and then of course, you know, Kenyan literature and so on and so forth. No, I, I do believe we should give ourselves the permission, right, uh, to read and study and write about other cultures, right? The, the problem becomes when there's a power imbalance, right? You know, so if in the US the debate is around, I, I, oh yeah, if you guys are interested, you can find this online. I wrote an article uh, called, uh, like, it was, the, the title was supposed to be funny, but something to the effect of, a, 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 like, a concise guide to white writers about how they can write about black characters and some of the things I did with this book. Yes, and, and, and I, I, I was telling that as a joke, actually, right? Then you'll come to me, okay, why don't I, you know, because some people are trying to write from, from a place of, of, of goodness, let me put it that way, right? Why, why don't I just sit down and as a writer and, and as a scholar who thinks about these issues, why don't I just give advice that I think would be useful? Uh, and, 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 and part of the advice is honesty, right? You have to be honest with your own limitations. Don't think you're writing for the people, right? So, but, if you, but, but I do believe deep down in this question is a question of power, right? You know, so um, me, just you know, just a Kenyan dude, you know, going into Ethiopia and wanting to hear about the music, I, I think very, very different uh, from a white person uh, who, um, you know, who traditionally has that power. So, so I want to be part of the equation. Can I appropriate? Uh, yeah, I, I can appropriate. Yeah, I can. Um, if I if, if I don't write honestly, right? If if I, if I decide to write about the Chizitas, I'm going to explain to Ethiopians what the Chizita means to them, or uh, you know, or even you know the jokes around man's plane and you know and all that stuff, right? Uh, but but really, I, but really, the challenge here is to just write honestly. Uh, whether you're a scholar or a writer or a musician, just be honest, you know, and, and be vulnerable with your own. I uh, understand your own vulnerabilities and limitations. I think understanding your own limitations yeah, is very, very important. Thank you. I'd like to spread that a wee bit to the Kenyan context in particular. You mean you want to unpack it? Yes, <laughs> yes, unpack it a bit further. And yeah. say, would you, uh, as you are, yeah. uh, Ngogi, uh, yeah. say, oh, he's Ngogi, what the Ongo son. Yeah. Would you take that and say, within the con Kenyan context, are you a Kenyan writer, mm -hmm. or are you a Kikuyu writer mm -hmm. writing in English? Uh, this oh, idea, yeah, identity yeah, yeah, within yeah. within the whole. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely a Koyo, right? Like, like I said, I was born in the US, but I grew up here. I grew up in the US, I was coming from Naivasha. One of the pleasantries was seeing the last before I grew up. I mean, it's, it's, I'm a Koyo, right? Um, but I, I don't believe that if I write as a Koyo, and then this doctor you're talking about the Kenyan setting, there's this idea that if you write in a, in a, in a Kenyan language, you know that you're spreading an ethnicity, right? Where you're seen as a nationalist. No, it's our languages, right? And and, and the most and the most natural thing which I'm which I'm not doing because I'm writing in English. And and there's some pain for me in that. Uh, but the most natural thing is to is to write in your language. Like you write from where you are, you write from you write from your culture. Uh, but with that say I definitely do take pride in calling myself a Kenyan writer, right? 
uh, because in reality, uh, when I look at all the, the, the other books that I've written, they get their imaginative muscle, right? They get their imaginative muscle from Kenya. Um, you know, some of the things I experienced, you know, growing up as Buddhist, uh, you know, a lot of trauma I should have, right? Um, but, but all those things that, that I'm writing from uh, are Kenyan, right? Um, but I would add, because of now having lived in the US for over half my life, actually, I went there when I was 20, I'm 50 now, uh, that I've had to think about blackness itself, right? So I've had to think about being Kenyan. Uh, I've had to say, even though people might say, you know, that, uh, you know, that I've lived abroad too long, I've, I've just had to play, I've, I've, I've had to play the Kenyan identity myself and say nobody's going to tell me if I'm Kenyan or not. Uh, but at the same time, I've had to claim an American identity. I've got a black identity. So in fact, the book I'm writing now uh, is on the, the relationship between Africans and African Americans. So I would say, I would say we start from somewhere, right? But, but we, have to, we, have, we have to acknowledge our complexities. No, not to talk for too long, but I, I did a DNA test actually, right? Uh, and the reason I did a DNA test was because I believe yeah, and that was proven correct, of course. The, the history we learned in the primary school, I don't know if it's still accurate, <laughs> you know, but they did bring migrations from, uh, from Southern Africa, right? Uh, all the way to Eastern Africa and so on and so forth. So, you know, and yet, because I'm very conscious of, of the Koyo nationalism, I, I, I wanted to do the DNA test to show, at least to, to show that we don't have, a, we, think, we think because we are, we are black or we think because we are Kenyan or we think because we are Kikuyu or Lu with our identity as stable. Anyway, my DNA test came back and I had as, as expected. Most of most of it was from uh, Southern Africa or the way to the to the Congo. Uh, and to my point that oh and this is maybe that this is like an appropriate Ethiopian culture, <laughs> it turned out something like eleven to twenty percent Ethiopian and like nine percent Somali, right? So so even though somebody would look at me and say that that's a more koyo, right? They would say that's a more koyo. Uh, the reality of who I am is that they've already uh, even even though you look at me and say I'm more koyo. It's already very, very complex, and and, uh, and as the DNA gets the DNA testing, uh, as they populate it more and more and more, I think we will realize just how uh, complex our identities are. But then, within that within that definition, mm -hmm. there's a whole idea of, of language. You are a Mubikuyu because you don't speak any other language. You, you don't speak Amharic. You don't speak Tigrani. And then, or forget all the DNA moving up and down. It's the language that's defining being in the country. Um, uh, definitely language is important. Right? Uh, you know, as, as Bogey says, you know, the language carries our culture, our history, right? Um, and I, I, I do like the fact that I speak the Koyo, right? I mean, you know, I, I'm glad I grew up speaking the Koyo. Uh, because there's a certain loss, right? Especially for, you know, for, for, for people in my generation who grew up in Nairobi. You know, I mean, there, there's something, there's, there's a loss in that stuff. And also something that's just plain ridiculous, right? That when you go speak to your grandmother, <laughs> you, you need a translator, right? I mean, so, 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 so maybe the question is not so much about um, my, my being more equal speaking, speaking, speaking the Koyo. I think maybe the question is, like, what have we done to ourselves, right? Like, what have we done to ourselves to celebrate? You know, because we do celebrate, we do celebrate that alienation, right? Uh, you hear parents who are who are proud that their kids uh, don't speak, you know, don't speak a Kenyan language. But with that said, I think this is something I was talking with, with the money job the money job yesterday. Uh, no, actually today in the morning in the Russia, um, that, that that I've seen uh, with different generations, the different relationships to Kenyan languages. Right? You know, so uh, definitely for my father's generation. They were all for English, right? They, some of them might have changed later, like my dad, right? Uh, but they grew up within what in my book I call the English metaphysical empire, right? And they believed it, and they, you know, they swallowed it whole, so to speak. Uh, then you have my generation in the 1970s, where we, we grew up with the same attitude towards Kenyan languages. But with the younger generation, and people here can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but, but I think for the younger generation, for them, they don't have the same hang ups, right? Uh, with, with Kenyan languages, you know, um, you know, I'm going to speculate and say, I, I, I think, I think the closer you are to, to colonialism, right, the more messed up. <laughs> I mean, for lack of a better word, I, I used a stronger word, you know, but you know, but I don't use strong words here. But 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 the more messed up you are, so the closer the closer your generation is to colonialism, 
the more messed up we are. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn to, you said at the beginning, we're going to talk about uh, the book itself, the yeah. great part. Uh, so that there's a sort of philosophy that you bring to the process. Mm. Unbury our dead with song. Mm. Why the title? Did you choose it? You know, it was so, so, so weird back when it was with the editor. So the editor uh, chose the title. I think the original title I, I, the, the original title I had was uh, I we sing the Tizita. Oh, okay, I guess the only change was, you know, we sing our Tizita, right? So, so, so I think my the original title was we sing our Tizita, we are very dead with song, right? So it's an abbreviation of that. Uh, but it's something in the characters, like the whole book really is captured by, you know, by the song, because with the Tizita and listening to it, uh, the question that I was left with was, you know, I'm, I'm very much aware of my mortality, right? I mean, it's, it's inevitable that all of us here will die. Like that's, you know, that's, that's a fact. Um, so then, what remains of us? Right? What will remain of us? You know, ten years, you know, twenty, maybe hopefully forty, right? But what will remain of us? And there, there's a scene in the book where the character, um, you know, goes to a graveyard. Right? Um, this happened to me in real life. You know, I, I was living in a in an apartment where behind uh, there was a graveyard, right? That had been abandoned, you know. So I'll, I'll go out and yeah, I'll go there to have a beer. You know, it's very, it was very easy. Uh, yeah. So, but then I started looking at, at, at the at the grave. What are they called? The, the stones, right? And some of them were from the like I don't know, like the 1600s, 1700s, you know. And, and the graves have been left, you know, and, uh, untended, right? So, so, so yeah. And, and, and but you can imagine how you know we hold on to a grave, to a graveyard, and so on and so forth. But eventually, almost without a doubt, unless you're a president where they do the burning flame, they cannot burn the flame. But, but, but it, it, in the end, we'll all be in these graves where that are, that are overgrown and so on and so forth. So what remains, right? Uh, and for those who are here now, how can they connect with those who have left? You know, and, and, and that becomes, when you're hearing that you sit and you're hearing these echoes, you're hearing this music uh, that, you know, that those people in the attendant graves were listening to. So, so it becomes a way of unbarring. Right. Of the the, yeah. whole, the yeah. whole nation, there's a meditational thing going on yeah. right across the book. Yeah. But I am going to now uh, drop the sort of hook uh -huh. of imagining mm -hmm. that I am a school teacher mm -hmm. teaching your book. Mm -hmm. It's gone into these exhausted times. Mm -hmm. It's a set book. Mm -hmm. And any number of thousands of Kenyan kids are reading it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've sorted out the idea of where you got the title from. Mm -hmm. I'm now going to go back into this idea of structure. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got several musicians, mm -hmm. and they're all into a competition. And we won't give too much away. Yeah. We, won't, we won't sort of, we'll the, the, book, the book is here, the <laughs> book is here to be bought. Yeah. So we're talking around the book. And yeah. But you, you know your structure. Mm -hmm. Why the une unevenness of structure? Why does the corporal get more than Miriam? Mm. Why does Miriam get less than, than would you get? Yeah. So, if you're giving a master class about writing, yeah. Yeah. If, if I ignore you in a conversation yeah. and talk to somebody else, mm. by definition, you're a lesser being mm. to my perception. So yeah. why don't your characters yeah. have equal... When I was being really anal about it, yeah. uh, I sort of said, um, mm. okay, the diva, uh, went from page 75 to page yeah. 140. Yeah, so yeah. the diva really, you know, you're running yeah. on the diva. Uh, yeah. The Taliban man goes from page 141 to page 175. Yeah. Yeah. But by the time we get to the corporal, he's doing page 176 to page 211. Yeah. You had all this time to write, yeah. why did you give them equal footage? Yes. Are some characters mm. more important than others? Uh, I was thinking that this is for, uh, for, for the narrator, right? I, 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 I think the narrator falls in love with, um, with the diva. And, and I'll say maybe for myself as well. I mean, I, well, one of the best known musicians, um, just a musician, my name is Bessel. Right? Oh, yeah, so, so, so you can find the music I was listening to as I was, as I was writing the book. You can just Google my name and uh, visit a playlist to find it. Uh, yeah, but I was spent hours listening to Bessel, right? But, but not, not, not her music, but her interviews. That's why, like, again, like I said, I don't speak of Harry. So, it's also, in a way, you could say I fell in love with the dog, and consequently, John McCready, uh, the, 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 the narrator fell in love with, um, with the diva. 
Um, so, so, so that's one, right? Uh, but, I, but I would say if exactly the publisher also picked up and asked why they are given this, right? But, but, I, but I think it's, it's almost like you're trying to hide something, right? It's almost, to my mind anyway, right? It's almost like, so, if you, so you have to look at the data from different angles, right? Um, but there's a question there. Uh, yeah, no, no, yeah, really, there is a question which you must make clear to the school teacher uh, teaching the yeah, yeah. If the Tizita, uh, the same song, uh, sung in different ways, uh, or is it an art form uh, like the blues? Because you just oh, mentioned one, yeah, yeah. and you also mentioned Asta Aweke. Now, yeah. if we're in Kenya, just one moment. Uh, if we're in Kenya, uh, Asta Aweke came to Nairobi uh, and performed. Mm -hmm. And I had the great privilege of seeing her before. Yeah. So the art form which she mm -hmm. was manifesting was the Tizita. Yeah. Because yeah. the composition, are uh, mm -hmm. these people trying to sing the yeah. same song yeah. so, or the same, so they different things? Okay, so, so again, this is, why, this is why like you have all these characters trying to, you know, it's also for, for, for Matt Freddy, uh, he's trying to get to the Tizita through different, um, through the different characters. And at some level, actually, you would say that uh, that the novel fails, and I'm not saying fail in a bad way, right? I'm saying in the end, uh, you you first you need the participation of the of the oh, of the reader, right, to read it and then hear and to hear the song through words. Um, it, 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 to my mind, it's both. Like, and this is where again, you know, that the audience might disagree, but to my mind, it does both. It, it's one song, right? It's one song. Uh, but with different interpretations, right? It's, so you can have like the Taliban one, you know, you can have uh, like some, some sort of hip hop interpretation of the song, right? You can have a bluesy interpretation, you can have a bougie interpretation, and so on and so forth. So, so, but, 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 but the thing that the thing that defines it all is that it's I, I think we know what I use the word containment, right? right. So, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, 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 so it's not about. It's not about singing, you know, in, 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 you know, and hitting high notes and so on and so forth. The one thing that that, that conjoins uh, all, all the other other musicians to my mind is that they have to give themselves to the song, right? And and, and that was that's very 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 very, 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 very difficult to convey. Yeah, but then they have to give themselves and be humble and be vulnerable to the song. And what is surprising about them, you know, like you mentioned Asa, right? Uh, when you listen to that Tizita, you can hear that containment. It's almost like you're listening to the inside of a grenade, right? So, so the power is in containment. You know, then, then you get surprised later when you listen to us and realize, you know, she can go with Houston uh, for the young people here. Uh, I know I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> you know, you realize she can go with Houston on the high notes, right? Uh, so, so for them, yeah, so, so I think for the musician, then this is now me listening. It becomes about continuing. It's everything like, like a sonnet, right? You know, yeah. I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. I mean, yeah. I will study the book in school and yeah. you know, uh, beyond the author. Yeah. I'm going to read you another passage yeah. to give yeah. uh, mm -hmm. our, our viewers a feel mm -hmm. for the yeah. your writing. Yeah. And here is this uh, the, mm -hmm. the protagonist, is a yeah. journalist. Yeah. And he studied uh, abroad, he yeah. got a degree, and uh, we'll get onto the ideas of sub themes later. Mm -hmm. But having been to the competition, he there's this idea of uh, making things up. When he actually oh, yeah, begins, yeah, yeah. when he begins to write for the National Inquisitor, mm -hmm. uh, with you know sort of throwback to the National Enquirer, yeah. I thought in that in your culture, mm -hmm. this is what he writes. He goes, so he's been to the competition. Yeah, yeah. He says sex, drugs, and rock and roll disease. At the popular white and black bourgeoisie Norfolk Hotel, mm -hmm. a secret competition was held away from the eyes of you, the common Kenyan. Mm -hmm. It started off as a simple affair, a competition to find out who amongst top Ethiopian musicians could give the best rendition of the Tizita, a popular song over there. But according to our whistleblower account, one soon-to-be-named Kenyan tycoon got wind of it. They decided to open up the competition to all musicians, and what was supposed to be a story about trying to find the soul in music became one of corruption, sex, and drugs. Mm -hmm. Am I, as a Mwalimu in the classroom, mm -hmm. thinking that Mukoma from Mugi says that there is no truth out there and everything is up for grabs to be mm -hmm. our, our, the nation, the standard, mm -hmm. the star, 
are all tabloids. Mm -hmm. Is that what I'm going to tell the kids you're trying to say? Well, I mean, so, so for me it's a bit complicated because I grew up in, um, you know, like I said, I've been in the 1970s, right? So that's when we had the Kenyatta government. Uh, then also the 1990s when we had the Moi government. Okay, so, so, so in those days, really, like the nation, they were tabloidish, right? It to the extent, I'm not saying they wrote, you know, like juicy tabloid stories, mm -hmm. but to the extent they had uh, a very loose relationship to the truth, right? Um, and I'm saying, is this an empirical statement that you're making as an author? Yeah, so, so but, but, um, but for him, or the character, I, I couldn't make him, I didn't feel like I could make him, you know, like a real journalist, because he needed to, he needed to go into those silly places, right? And he needed to be young um, Yeah, so, 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 yeah, so, so, for him, yeah, yeah, so he raised this juicy, I think he's a type of, like, writer. But I assume that though that for him, um, he's not just a tabloid writer, but he's a the, the child of uh, of parents who worked and perhaps even slept with Moi. Let me put it that way, right? The Moi, the Moi dictatorship. So, so he's coming from those sort of families, right? And and and, now, and let me go off on a tangent a little bit because it's an interesting story. Uh, so, and the reason why I was thinking of Manfredi, the main character, that way. Uh, it's because years ago, we were talking about the 2000s, I was living in Atlanta, you know, and I met this, uh, this, this, this woman who, whose father was one of the people uh, who put my father into detention, right? Her father was part of that chain, right? And then what I remember from that meeting, it, it passed, it's almost like she wanted my forgiveness, which of course it wasn't my duty, right? Uh, but it was the pain, right? The pain. You know, and, and, and then before that, it never occurred to me. You know, it never occurred to me that um, that as we are, you know, as as we are, you know, my dad was being put in detention and exile and all, all the stuff we went through. Uh, it never occurred to me how the other kids, you know, that I was seeing my sister's faces, <laughs> you know, living the good life, you know, how how psychologically, how psychologically they were. So when they came to creating the character, uh, that's what I gave him, right? So, so he, he has to work for a tabloid, you know, to go into those city places. At the same time, he has to come from the elite family, where indeed, uh, if you believe him, where indeed you see the sex and the drugs. And if you're you coming from the Moy era, though, I mean, don't it's, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, those are the stories we grew up hearing anyway, right? Yeah, okay. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to draw you on the map, because these are the, the, the subtexts. You yeah. also have to do some research, because yeah. having chosen Ethiopia, mm -hmm. you're going into the Eritrean war, mm -hmm. a lot of people are digging oh, yeah, in yeah. the dungeons. Now, again, you just said, I don't speak uh, Amharic, I'm not Tigrayan, but you've chosen to plunge yourself into a history which isn't intrinsically mm -hmm. your own. Yeah. How do you tell yeah. yeah. so, so, so yourself on that one? So, let me tell you another story. Uh, and it happens in the novel as well. Uh, so I say to this, I passed a visitor in Victoria, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Boston, right? So, but then, back then, with a friend of mine, uh, we used to go to this pub called Charles River Pub, it's in the novel. And that Charles River Pub, he was mostly uh, every year in Ethiopia, so this is the year in 2000, right? And, but that's why we came out, the beer was cheap, you know, great conversations, you know, so before we go elsewhere. But what I do remember, though, uh, is when the war between Eritrea and Ethiopia broke out in the late 2000s. When it broke out, people who before, you know, were sitting down, you know, and laughing and enjoying each other, right? They would each sit on their own separate corner of the bar. Which, again, it, this is not in the novel, but it was, I was thinking about it when, uh, when the post electoral went to the post electoral round that started happening in Kenya in 2007, right? Again, it was the same thing, you know, people you know, across ethnicities, you know, you could use you know, you know, a friend with you and so on and so forth. You know, just start talking to each other, right? or you would hear people, you know, the Kuru nationalists raising money, and these are professors as well, raising money for Mugeki. Anyway, so, 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 so those things. I'll cut you short. I'll cut yeah. you short in the sense that as a writer, uh -huh. as a writer, uh -huh. remember that in the far flung days when we couldn't uh -huh. criticize the Moy regime or the Kenya regime. Yeah. And we did plays that were yes. set in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We did Waza Albert, we did Death and the Maiden, simply yeah. because the special branch couldn't work out the yeah. similarities. Yeah. Are you doing mm -hmm. the same thing? Is Ethiopia a proxy for Kenya? Well, definitely, and not a proxy, not a proxy, you know, because I'm, I'm truly uh, interested in, I mean, that's all I listen to today, the streets of music. 
Um, no, it is, it's not. It's not a proxy, but definitely, you know, it's, it's also about Kenya, right? You know, so you could at least have Kenya and have Ethiopia. Um, but but when, when was the, but when I was writing the novel, it would never occur to me. Of course, I mean, for Ethiopians, it would have. Uh, it wouldn't have occurred to me that Ethiopia would be where it is now, with you know, the great ports and uh, the Oromo, you know, and the Amharic and so on and so forth. You know, and I have to say that has been very heartbreaking, right? So, you know, so so, so it, it, for me as a Kenyan as well, you know. But but the whole idea of um, of you know of how of, of how little Africa life matters to Africans, right? You know. Oh yeah, so yeah, and, and then going back to the Eritrean and Ethiopian war in the 2000s, it was French warfare, it was just you know thousands and thousands of people dying. You know that's what we're seeing today. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. So 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 then, so I'm very very much thinking about that, especially now. You know that I've written the book about you know the Tisita and yeah, in yeah. yeah. The, the, the Kenyan thread, Mohammed, uh, yeah. has a fascination for me yeah. in another way, which is all about Kenya. Because you're going off with a father, a father-son relationship, yeah. and yeah. you have this very poignant scene mm. where, again, not to give things away, yeah. but a son is interrogating mm. the, 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 the the father. Uh, yeah. And I said to myself again, in terms mm. of authorship, yeah. I said, mm. is there a personal? Is yeah. Mukoma juxtaposing his mm. own life into his character? Now, if we yeah. read about the mythology, mm -hmm. people like Philip Rowe yeah. and all these guys, they spend yeah. all their time, we have a chat with you, yeah. Yeah. and next minute you're in chapter five of my novel, and uh, Philip Rowe's wife wants to uh, divorce <laughs> uh, would, would you find that there are people in your novel who wouldn't speak to you again because you've written about them? No, 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 no not at all, not at all. Um, you know, but but you know, but certainly the father son relationship in the novel is also between you know my relationship to my father, right? Um, you know, especially uh, now 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 we have you know been able to you know all that it's 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 in, it's in the past. Um, yeah, but it wasn't even good enough for when he was in Egypt, right? Um, you know, because when he was again in the branch of the you know of the Moy regime, you know, when he was in Egypt. Yeah, so, so so there were definitely some questioning, you know, that I, that, that we had to do, right? Um, in the 1990s when we passed, because we went to the in 1982, uh, we did it again until the, the year 2000. So, yeah, I think 1990. Anyway, right. I mean, yeah, I'll forgive you the, the <laughs> self revelation. It's not. It's not necessary. No, 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 no. for this conversation. Yeah, yeah no. I, I would ask. Mm. I, I, I mean. Juxtaposition in style. Yeah, yeah. Somebody asked a question, and uh, that sound is more than rhythm. Sound is everything. The soul. The soul. Isn't that a bit vague? I asked. Because it is unknown. We want to call it unknown because that is easy. Think about the first death, the Sizita. To me, for me, is that sound of the first death? The recognition and the surprise and the realization, that first consciousness that realized it was going to be no more. It wanted to leave a message in a bottle that becomes me and you. With the Tazita, I can feel it, I know it, but I cannot speak it. Mm. And then, so that's the lyric, you know, you can, you can well be, you know, the, the, the author of logotherapy. Mm. And then in chapter 21, where in an orgy, and in the orgy, uh, basically, for, for the Kenyan public, uh, we're not going to read that section yeah. because it's going to be blitzed out and nobody's going to read it. Yeah. But why the but, switch? But why, why? Yeah, that's why you, guys, you need to read the book. 
You have to read the book. But in terms, in terms, in terms of craft, uh, why this very sort of sordid, vivid language depicting sex, uh, condoms, uh, dildos, confetti, and then there you are as a latter day sort of, I don't know, uh, writer of science. Why do you do that? Yeah, so I, I, to, no, the, the more direct question to the writer yeah, yeah. is are you trying to corner the market for everybody? Yeah. There's something in there, <laughs> there's a bit of laughter, there's a bit of fun, it's all in there. You know, so, so yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, so, um, I think for me it was all about the characters, right? You know, so, so the scene you read is actually one of my favorite things to read as well. Uh, because that's when, that's when the, the corporal is trying to explain what to him. The visitor means, and then he goes on to say that, uh, you know, that for him, the visitor is almost like a 300,000 uh, human archive of, of emotion and so on and so forth, right? Um, but, but with the scene, with the audio scene, it's a Taliban man, you know, they're this young, dynamic um, a group of people, they're all friends, right? Um, you know, the Taliban man is, he's a very like, extremely gifted musician, right? But anyway, um, here they are, they're all the, the young people who, you know, are doing well, you know, successful in terms of jobs and stuff like that. Um, you know, they're into music, they're into each other, right? So, so, and, 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 I, and for me, as I think, for them, sex doesn't mean what sex means to, you know, to less than to build of my generation, right? Uh, for them, sex is friendship, right? So, so even when they have the orgy, uh, which is, I'll say it was fun to write. <laughs> so, 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 so if they have the orgy, you know, they just go back. They just go back to play music, right? Nobody's saying let's get married. They, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they, 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 it's another form of fun for them. They are, okay, let me put it this way: they are liberated uh, in ways, you know, that yeah, that, 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 yeah, I should, I should have in ways that I'm not. Yeah, myself. Yeah. Okay. So. So we've covered the orgy scene. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and indeed, we've led people to the orgy scene. Your sales might rise. And we'll come up. There, there's, we have to go back to the, the trajectory of, of, of you as we draw to a close as a writer. When I began, there was this whole list of uh, novelists, fiction. Yeah. And having, I think, of the titles that I mentioned, mm -hmm. I, I have read Larry the Heat, mm -hmm. so yeah. I've read that. I'd like to say whether there is a progression and a plan for you as a writer, mm -hmm. or will the next novel be mm -hmm. completely, do you have an agenda? No, no, I don't. Um, but I do have a plan, I do have a plan as I'm, as I'm going to write uh, the prequel, is it called a prequel? Mm -hmm. you know, And then one more, right? Uh, and I, I always wanted to write popular fiction as a homage to, again, talking about, you know, in this case, what you said, David Mayu. Have you guys read David Mayu? Indeed. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so Nairobi is a homage to Kenya. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah to David Mayu, homage of one, they don't carry a bit, like popular Kenya fiction writer. But, but I always plan to do three. Um, I don't know, I, I, I like to express myself in different genres. Uh, because I think it leads you to different places. Like I, I don't think, for example, if I if I had, um, you know, in in, in, in in this book, if I had it, where the, you know, where, where I had it, like things fall apart. Let me put it that way, right? Or or you know, a grain of wheat, <laughs> you know, like like that sort of serious, you know, serious uh, African literature. I don't think I would take me to the places I went, right? So so I think different genres take me to different places. You know, in Nairobi, it I'm able to explore. Um, you know, Africans and African Americans, right? With the book I'm writing now, uh, I've been I've been traveling around. You know, I was in Ghana visiting places. I was in, uh, uh, yeah, a few months ago. I drove across the U.S. You know, going to looking at um, you know the museums, African American museums and stuff like that. Right? Because that that genre, that sort of memoirish, scholarly genre, is demanding that I do that sort of research. Yeah. So I think this genre takes me to a different place. Yeah. But I, again, on the whole idea of, of message, here am I, remember, I'm a Mwalimu and I'm teaching, yeah, I'm teaching yeah. your book. Mm. Uh, and are you trying to tell us something about ourselves as human beings? Mm. Because let, let's go back to your court book. Mm. Now, the court book is your book, you know, better than I do. Mm. But just from reading it once, is somebody who's creating.
amazing, magnificent disease. Yeah. But on another level, everybody is saying that he is fake mm -hmm. and he could well be a war criminal. Mm -hmm. And 